Hard to believe, but the 25th anniversary of the Northridge earthquake is now just days away. Conan Nolan spoke to Dr. Lucy Jones about that fateful day and what we have learned since then. All right, Dr. Lucy Jones, formerly of the U.S. Geological Survey, now at the Center for Science and Society and at uh, Caltech. Thanks for taking the time. Wonderful to be here. Uh, we should point out you have sunglasses. They're prescription. You're not, it's not a movie star thing. It's the only, yeah, I, they change on me and I can't stop it. 25 years ago, Northridge, where were you? I was in bed, like most people were. It was 4.30 in the morning uh, in West Pasadena. I've made sure that my bed is a safe place to be and I had my kids with me, so I uh, held on to them and told them it was okay and wrote it out. I remember going to Caltech to the Seismological Laboratory. It was a shallower earthquake apparently from the San Fernando Valley quake of 1971, which is one of the reasons why it was felt over such a wide area. You arrived, it's dark, and your colleagues are showing up and you're trying to figure it out. It's an interesting thing to remember. This is 1994, and our budgets hadn't been what we might have wanted, and our computers were pretty old. Uh, the computers with, that we were recording the data on at that point had been bought in the mid-80s. We didn't have digital telemetry back then. So you had no idea from the telemetry that there was an earthquake? We knew that there was an earthquake. I mean, we could see it on the seismograms, and we all felt it, but we couldn't get the computer to tell it to us because it was such an old computer it didn't have enough bandwidth to record the aftershocks and talk to us. Which gets to the next question, which is how much we've learned from that. Uh, this was a blind thrust fault. You right. can de describe that for us, but it's like this fault was never named. Oh, right, so the fault doesn't come to the surface. You know, you guys sometimes talk about fault lines. You'll never hear a seismologist say fault lines because a fault is a plane. The line you see on a map is the intersection of the plane of the fault with the surface of the earth and that the intersection of two planes is a line. So, but if it never comes up to the surface, it goes like this, you don't get a line. That was Northridge. And that was Northridge. What you get is some hills. The Northridge hills are the ones that have formed above the end of this fault. And, you, you know, and then pushed up the Santa Susana Mountains, so you've got sort of this whole system going on, but buried. And up until Northridge, we would have said, you couldn't have that big an earthquake on a blind fault. That if it's a big enough fault to give you a big earthquake, it has to come all the way through to the surface. And then we had Northridge, and we had to, to revise that idea. And one of the things that came out of it was some funding to go in and essentially do a CAT scan of the LA Basin. And we could start seeing that Northridge wasn't just a localized little fault, it extends out, if you go farther to the west, into the Ventura area, there's something called the Oak Ridge Fault. We're told that it begins somewhere in the San Gabriel Mountains near San Fernando, makes its way 70 miles all the way over to the Santa Barbara Channel. And I think most of us at this point think that the Oak Ridge Fault, which does come to the surface, tra travels to the east and then sort of dips down and does no longer breaks through to the surface. So this is the eastern edge of a bigger fault that does show up in, in Ventura County. Is it fair to say that prior to Northridge, Seismologists such as yourself were focusing on the mighty San Andreas, the, the one that separates the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, and that was the focus. You didn't think, or a lot of people, didn't appreciate the seismicity underneath the ground we're on right now. It was going back and forth. Between 1987 and 94, we had seven damaging earthquakes in L.A. So every year we had a damaging earthquake. We had Whittier Narrows, we had Pasadena, we had Sierra Madre, we had Malibu. We had all of these different earthquakes. And so we were watching, they were smallish, they were fives to, to, they were all in fives. What did this mean? Why are we having this? So we were talking about it, but it didn't seem that big. It wasn't like the big ones you have out on the San Andreas. And I think that that's what Northridge did was say, oh yeah, you have big ones in LA too. In terms of public education, what did Northridge mean? Northridge helped a lot in terms of changing our attitudes to how we talk with the public. I mean, I think it's an interesting thing. Where are we now compared to where we were in 94? Um, in many ways, we, have, we, we haven't had earthquakes, so we don't have the um, emotional imperative that having a damaging earthquake every year gives you. Uh, but we've been able to compensate with this information and the shakeout. And in many ways, we have a higher level of awareness now than we did then, even though we'd been having a lot more earthquakes at the time. So the job isn't done. 
but you have an app. That's remarkable. It's pretty amazing. And the app, um, you can draw a line straight from Northridge to what we're doing with earthquake early warning. Um, because the system failed in Northridge, we got more money. You know, there's nothing that succeeds like failure in the federal government. And because of those problems, we got a chunk of money to start improving the computers. We got more and more telemetry, and now we've sped it up to the point that sometimes the information will get to you before uh, the shaking itself does. And compared to months to get that information back in, in 1994. If Northridge were to happen today, what would we expect? If it happened today, we might still see a collapse like Northridge Meadows because we haven't completed the retrofit. Let's, let's put it in five years. If Northridge happens in five years, half the deaths, the ones from the Northridge Meadows apartment, are probably not going to happen because we've retrofitted those buildings. If it happens today, but at two in the afternoon, we're going to have a lot more deaths because we've still got our issue around our concrete commercial buildings. We won't see a freeway collapse, probably. Caltrans has invested $10 billion in retrofitting freeway bridges because of Loma Prieta and Northridge. We might very well see collapse of county and city bridges because they haven't gotten any of that money. The problem, of course, is we're not going to get exactly Northridge. Let's imagine we now have a 6.7 on the Hollywood Fault or the Santa Monica Fault or the Whittier Fault or the Palos Verdes Fault. Um, those are all much closer to people. And then the really strong shaking that brought landslides down all through the Santa Susana Mountains are now going to be coming into our houses. And especially in some of those locations, into old houses. And um, depending on the time of day, we could still have a lot of deaths in an earthquake like that. So be prepared. Be prepared. And remember, you have more control than you think you do. Have you retrofitted your own home? If you own it, it's your responsibility. That building is as good as the building code in place when it was built and the degree to which it was enforced. And unless you live in Chatsworth, you haven't gotten the strong shaking of Northridge yet. Dr. Lucy Jones, thank you very much. A lot of people sleep better uh, because, because of your efforts. I, I appreciate that, Conan. It's, uh, it's taken time and effort and work, and it's been worth it. We'll have final comments coming up right after this.